In Activity 7, Properties of Solids, students are introduced to the properties of solids. Students first examine a wood block and draw up a list of properties that describe the block. Students then test the relative hardness of an assortment of solid objects and infer the properties of solids in general. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 7, Blocks, Birthday Candles, Corks, Foam Cups, Rubber Pencil Erasers, Smooth Rocks, sorting trays, stick of clay, wood samples, and the describing properties chart. You will also need to provide chalk, plastic pen caps, resealable plastic bag, crayon, dull knife, felt tip marker, and a pencil. To prepare for session one, make a copy of activity sheet seven for each student. Each team of two will need a block and a foam cup. You will also need a crayon and a pencil for class demonstration. To begin session one, distribute a block to each team and allow them time to examine the block. Then stimulate a class discussion by asking students, what are some properties of your block? A student should mention size, color, shape, texture, and weight. Then ask students to describe how the block feels and whether or not the block changes shape when you hold it. A student should observe that their block feels dry and hard and stays the same shape during holding. Next, distribute a foam cup to each team and tell students to put their block in the cup. Ask students, what happens to its shape when you do this? Students should notice that the shape of the block does not change when the block is placed in the cup. Then ask, can you easily pour the block out of the cup? And does the block's shape change when you pour it out of the cup? Students should observe that the block does not pour easily from the cup, nor does the block's shape change when the block is poured. Encourage your students to think of other objects that have a definite shape and that would keep their shape both in and out of a cup. Next, define a solid to the class as matter that has a definite size and shape, and identify the block as a solid. Then ask students, what other objects can you think of that are solids? And what are some properties that all solids share? Answers to these questions will vary, but should include that all solids keep their shape. Next, post the describing properties chart in the classroom and add student observations to the chart under the heading Properties of Solids. To conclude session one, distribute activity sheet seven to students and have them complete question one. Make sure to save the students' activity sheets for use in session two. To prepare for session two, cut the clay into 16 equal pieces using a dull knife. Each student will need his or her copy of activity sheet seven as prepared for session one. Each team of two will need the following items in a sorting tray, a piece of clay, a birthday candle, a piece of chalk, a cork, a foam cup, a rubber pencil eraser, a plastic pen cap, a smooth rock, and a wood sample. To begin session two, review some of the properties of solids with the class and introduce another property of a solid, its hardness or softness. Explain to students that some solids are hard, strong, and do not bend, such as a wooden block, and that other solids are soft and bendable or flexible, like a foam cup. Elicit other ideas of hard, strong solids and soft, bendable solids from the students and let them know that in session two, they're going to test the hardness or softness of some solids. Then hold up a crayon and a pencil and ask the students, how can we tell which of these two objects is harder than the other? Invite a volunteer to test the relative hardness of the crayon and pencil by trying to put a dent in one using a fingernail and have the volunteer identify the object that was harder to dent, the pencil. Let students know that scientists compare the hardness of a group of solids by scratching them. Next, hold up a plastic pen cap and show students how easily it can scratch the crayon compared to the pencil. Next, distribute a sorting tray of objects to each team of two and allow students time to examine the objects. I hand out a copy of Activity Sheet 7, which you collected at the end of Session 1, to each student and inform students they're going to test the relative hardness of objects by scratching the objects with a plastic pen cap in pairs. And make sure students are aware of how hard they will have to press in order to scratch each object. Also note that due to the simplified nature of the pen cap test, results in this activity will be somewhat subjective. Uh, instruct students to test the first pair of objects, a piece of chalk and a smooth rock, and compare their results. 
Then have students record their results in question two of their activity sheets by circling the harder object of each pair. In a similar manner, have students test the relative hardness of the following pairs of objects. The clay and the candle, the foam cup and the rubber eraser, and the cork and the wood. The students should recognize that the candle was harder to scratch than the clay, that the eraser was harder than the foam cup, and that the wood sample was harder than the cork. Then challenge students to sort their objects according to relative hardness. After they have grouped the objects, ask students, how many groups did you make when you sorted your objects according to hardness? And which objects did you put together and why? Answers will vary. The students might have put the most easily scratched objects together, or they might have placed the rock and wood sample in a group together, as the rock and wood sample were the most resistant to scratching. Finally, as a class, arrange the objects from softest to hardest. If students can't agree on the order, suggest scratching the objects against each other to determine which object is softer and which object is harder. They have the students record their results in question three of their activity sheets. To conclude this activity, store the pieces of clay in a resealable plastic bag and return all materials to the kit. Remember to leave the chart on display. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the science reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.